Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Russia to add more Americans to blacklist in response to sanctions. Russia's government will add more Americans to its blacklist in response to new sanctions against Russians accused of election meddling. Tensions with Moscow are growing before Russia's presidential election Sunday, after a nerve agent attack in Britain on a Russian ex-spy. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov was quoted Friday by news agency RIA Novosti as saying that Russia is preparing sanctions against a new group of American actors and possible additional steps. He said Russia would target the same number of people as the U.S. but didn't say what the sanctions would involve. Ryabkov said he doesn't want to definitively close the door to dialogue and accuse the U.S. of threatening global stability. The Trump administration announced sanctions Thursday on 19 Russians and five companies accused of meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. Pruitt huddled with Cola exec who raised over $1 million for Trump. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt met with an Indiana coal executive last year who was seeking to soften a pollution rule, and who once boasted about raising more than a million dollars for President Donald Trump's campaign, according to documents provided to Politico. The records, obtained by the Sierra Club through a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against EPA, show that Stephen Chancellor, CEO of White Stallion Energy, met with Pruitt on May 22, 2017 for a courtesy call and introductory meeting. Pruitt has met regularly with GOP heavyweights ahead of what many expect to be a 2020 Senate run. He has also met with investors connected to Republican Megadener Sheldon Adelson as well as key conservative groups like the Family Research Council and Federalist Society. Chancellor is also the head of the American Patriot Group whose corporate headquarters in Evansville were designed to mimic the White House, and which owns White Stallion Energy, which mines coal from five sites in the Illinois Basin. He hosted a $10,000 per couple fundraiser with Donald Trump, Mike Pence and Rudy Giuliani in August 2016 that he said raised north of a million dollars. He later attended Trump's inauguration, where he was spotted shaking Pence's hand. A longtime powerhouse GOP fundraiser in the Hoosier State, Chancellor in the 2000 campaign hosted an event headlined by George H.W. Bush. And he and his company, Black Beauty Coal, which was later sold to Peabody Energy, directly gave a combined $310,000 to Republicans, the Washington Post reported at the time. Chancellor then served Bush's Energy Department transition team. He also raised more than $1 million for Mitt Romney in 2012. Chancellor petitioned the EPA in December 2016, asking the agency to soften a rule designed to curb pollution that floats across state lines. An update to the rule approved by the Obama administration could significantly impact Indiana utilities' reliance on coal produced from his mines, Chancellor wrote. EPA has not yet responded to Chancellor's petition or any of those regarding the update, the agency confirmed. Also in the meeting was Rashid Holloway, a former aide to Indiana Senator Evan Bay who went on to work directly for Chancellor and now represents him as an outside lobbyist. His client list also includes the American Coalition for Clean Coal Electricity. It is unclear whether Pruitt and Chancellor discussed his petition. Calls to Chancellor's office were not returned, and EPA did not return a request for comment. In addition to the Pruitt meeting, Interior Secretary Ryan Zink's calendar showed a meeting with White Stallion earlier that day, although it is not clear that Chancellor personally attended that meeting. But Zink named Chancellor earlier this month to Interior's new International Wildlife Conservation Council which will provide advice to Zinc on the benefits that result from United States citizens traveling to foreign nations to engage in hunting. That council is scheduled to meet at the Interior Department on Friday. Chancellor is a prolific big game hunter, and his mansion includes a trophy room stuffed with taxidermied lions, elephants, polar bears, 
rhinos and zebras, according to photos posted on a 2012 blog. In 2001, he mustered his political connections to lobby the government of Botswana to lift a ban on lion hunting. Interior earlier this month said hunters will be allowed to bring back elephant trophies from abroad. The documents provided to Politico also shows that Pruitt met with dozens of industry executives and trade group representatives between the May 19th and June 19th period the calendar covered. And he had phone calls with GOP governors, attorneys general and lawmakers. He saw public health groups twice. Pruitt also heard a pitch from executives of the water treatment technology company Reliable One Resources which appears to have arranged a meeting through a former lawyer for Devon Energy Corporation, the oil and gas company Pruitt had close ties to in his political career in Oklahoma. EPA has fought routine requests for Pruitt's schedules, turning them over only when forced by the courts after lawsuits brought by environmental or government transparency organizations. EPA posts a far less comprehensive version of his calendar online every few weeks, omitting names and discussion topics. The new releases keep lunch and travel details confidential, a practice the Pruitt EPA has long followed. The schedule released by EPA also did not reveal Pruitt's activities while representing the U.S. at a major international meeting in Italy, a trip that drew criticism because of its high travel costs and his policy of flying first class or business class. Pruitt and his staff spent $36,000 on a military jet to New York to catch a plane to Rome following a last-minute invite to an infrastructure event in Cincinnati with President Donald Trump. Pruitt tracked up another $7,000 in flight costs associated with the trip, including a business class ticket on the premium Emirates airline. The agency redacted information about meetings or events for two days of the trip and left another day's entries blank. The calendars offer no explanation for why Pruitt arrived several days early for the meeting of G7 environment ministers. He spent the first part of his trip in Rome and departed Bologna shortly after the meeting there began to return to Washington to attend a much-publicized meeting at the White House where cabinet secretaries praised Trump. Pruitt's public schedule listed only a meeting with the U.S. Embassy and then a business roundtable on his first afternoon in Italy. According to Pruitt's Twitter account, he kept a busy schedule in Italy before and during the G7 gathering, including meeting with executives from U.S. companies, touring the Vatican and meeting with a top church official, discussing rule of law with Luciano Panzini, the president of the Court of Appeal in Rome, attending a prosciutto and pasta reception, meeting with Therese Coffey, a Conservative Party member of the U.K. Parliament, speaking about air quality and baseball with Japanese Environment Minister Koichi Yamamoto and meeting on stewardship with UPS, Sealed Air, City and the U.S. Chamber. On the same Monday he met Chancellor, Pruitt spoke with the large Public Power Council CEO meeting about the elimination of regulations affecting the electric power industry, with Duke Energy CEO Lynn Good about Coash, and with the Congressional Coal Caucus. The calendar also shows Pruitt visiting Oklahoma twice in the month disclosed. On Saturday, May 20, in Tulsa he took an hour-long tour of Brainerd Chemical Company and then a half-hour tour of the restored office of oil baron Wait Phillips, which Brainerd CEO leases. Trump flips his own script when it comes to Stormy Daniels. President Donald Trump has adopted a time-honored strategy for coping with allegations that he had an affair with porn actress Stormy Daniels, ignore them. The president and his top aides have said nothing publicly about the controversy this week, even as Daniels' lawyers has engaged in repeated provocations, including revealing that she had an interview with the primetime news show 60 Minutes. Trump hasn't directly addressed the Daniels saga since the story surfaced earlier this year instead letting White House staffers and his personal lawyer deny allegations that she was paid hush money before the 2016 election to keep quiet about their affair. The muted response is unusual for a president who has rarely shied away from a fight. More than a dozen women have accused Trump of sexual misconduct. The president has refuted those allegations, often loudly. A woman I don't know and, to the best of my knowledge, never met 
is on the front page of the fake news Washington Post saying I kissed her, for two minutes yet, in the lobby of Trump Tower 12 years ago. Never happened. Trump tweeted earlier this year in response to a story about allegations that he kissed Rachel Crooks on the mouth in 2006. During a 2016 rally in Florida, Trump publicly denied that he forcefully kissed a former People magazine reporter who wrote a first-person story about their 2005 encounter. Take a look, you take a look. Look at her, look at her words, you tell me what you think. I don't think so, he said. But when it comes to Daniels, whose given name is Stephanie Clifford, Trump has kept his thoughts to himself, ignoring a shouted question from a reporter about Daniels on Saturday even after answering a separate question about North Korea. Some close to Trump said that was the only way forward, worrying that a public comment from the president would only amplify the scandal. My advice would be, don't give a porn star looking for publicity any attention. Soon her five minutes will be up said former Trump campaign adviser Barry Bennett. But people close to the president privately wondered whether Trump, who has a long track record of dealing with stories on his sex life published by his hometown New York tabloids, will erupt on Twitter or in another public venue after the 60 Minutes interview airs and headlines about it dominate cable news. Meanwhile, White House staffers are largely avoiding the subject altogether. White House officials contacted by Politico this week refused to speak about the fallout from the Daniels allegations. We've addressed this matter extensively and have nothing further to add. I'd direct you to the president's personal attorney, White House spokesman Rod Shaw said in an email. Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, did not respond to a request for comment on this story. Daniels claimed in a 2011 In Touch weekly interview which the magazine published in full in February, that she had a sexual relationship with Trump beginning in 2006, shortly after he married Melania Trump and around the time their son, Barron, was born. Earlier this year, The Wall Street Journal reported that Cohen paid Daniels $130,000 just days before the 2016 election. Cohen later said the money, paid through an LLC, came out of his own pocket and he has insisted that he was not reimbursed by the Trump organization or Trump's campaign. Even as Trump beefs up his outside legal team to combat Daniel's allegations, additional damaging stories are coming to light. Late Wednesday night, CNN and The Wall Street Journal reported on documents that appeared to tie the effort to silence Daniels to the Trump organization, despite repeated efforts to distance the president from the $130,000 payment. Arbitration documents filed in Orange County, California, list Trump organization lawyer Jill Martin as a representative for the LLC, Essential Consultants. Martin has said the Trump organization was not involved in the issue. Daniels has hired a lawyer, Michael Avnati, and has filed a lawsuit against Trump in a bid to nullify a non-disclosure agreement meant to keep her from talking about the alleged affair. Through Avnati. Daniels offered earlier this week to repay the money in exchange for being let out of the non-disclosure agreement. Last week, Avnati tweeted out a picture of him with his client and Anderson Cooper, who had conducted the interview with Daniels for CBS 16 Minutes. No air date has been set, though, as CBS says it is working to verify Daniels' claims. The only reason it hasn't run is that there's still a lot of journalistic work to do. CBS News Chief David Rhodes said on a panel in Jerusalem this week. And BuzzFeed is using a separate libel lawsuit filed against them by Cohen in connection with the 2016 dossier on Trump's links to Russian operatives to potentially allow Daniels to discuss the alleged affair. The relative quiet from the White House about Daniels is not unusual. Past presidents have sought to ignore scandals in hopes that they would go away. Though Bill Clinton's effort to diffuse questions about his involvement with Monica Lewinsky by claiming he didn't have sex with her ultimately led to his impeachment trial on perjury charges. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders hasn't been asked about Daniels at her televised briefing since last week, when she said that Trump has made very well clear that none of these allegations are true, adding, this case has already been won in arbitration and anything beyond that. I'd refer you to the president's outside counsel. Sanders continued, there was no knowledge of any payments from the president. But Trump's propensity to stretch the truth makes it harder to sustain a denial in public, 
crisis managers said, especially given the precedent set by the infamous Access Hollywood tape recording of Trump bragging in 2006 about groping women. There is no crisis management strategy that can be recommended to President Trump on this issue because of his history of lying and denying what everybody knows to be true, said Laney Davis, a former Clinton White House legal advisor. The public may also have an easier time following a sex scandal than the ins and outs of other scandals facing the administration, including the Russia investigation overseen by special counsel Robert Mueller. The public understands a good old-fashioned sex scandal, said Andrew Gilman, president of the consulting firm Comcore, who has worked with major corporations as they cope with international crises. Gilman added that Trump's team needs to get its story straight before more revelations come to light. At this point, if I'm the White House, he said, I'd put everyone in the proverbial war room and say, who knows what? And get all the facts on the table. Darren Samuelson and Jason Schwartz contributed to this story.